I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord will bless your sacrifice, your consecration, and your commitment to the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We we'll bless your name for bringing your people together. Thank you for your grace that you have chosen us, you have selected us, you have appointed us to be leaders in the kingdom, in the ministry, in the church of the living God. We pray that every brother, every sister will appreciate the calling you have given us and we will do what you expect of us in Jesus' name. Tonight, grant us understanding. Open our eyes that we'll behold and see wondrous, wonderful things in your word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. As you know already, we're looking at Revelation chapter 5. And as we look at Revelation chapter 5, I want you to understand that Revelation chapter 5 is prophetic and it is futuristic. That means we're not going back to what happened in the past. Already we know that the book of Revelation is divided into three parts. Chapter 1, the things you have seen. As the Lord was talking to John, part 2, chapters 2 and 3, the things which are, as the Lord was talking to John. And then from chapter 4, all through to the end, the things which shall be hereafter. And the things we shall be hereafter, that is, after the rapture, after the period of the church, that already started in chapter 4. As it says, after this I looked, and there was a door opened in the heaven, in heaven. And then he had a voice that said, come up hither. And then, as he was in the spirit, the Lord showed him the throne of God in chapter 4. And in that chapter 4, he spoke about things around the throne, and things out of the throne, and things in the midst of the throne, and the people before the throne. And then it goes on until we see what comes out of the throne and then culminates with the white throne of God. Now, as we come to chapter 5, chapter 5 is a continuation. The Lord God Almighty is still on the throne. And we're not going back to the period of the church. We're not going back to the period before the rapture. Now we are after the rapture, and we're in chapter 5. Look at chapter 5 as we read a few verses from verse 1. It says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. Something occurs there that the Almighty God, the potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is still on the throne and he has a book in his hand. You will see that in this chapter 5, the book is the center of attention. This book is not like, uh, you know, the books we have uh, that are printed and then uh, kind of uh, put together like uh, sealed or like it is uh, sewn at the back and then we open like this. It's like when you take a sheet of paper, you roll it and then you seal it at the edge. You roll again and seal at the edge and you roll and you keep on sealing like that until seven seals have been on the scroll, on the roll, on the book. 
If you're going to open the book to read, you have to open the first seal, open it and read, and then open the second seal, and you're unfolding until you open the seven seals, and then you can read. Let us see that here in chapter 5, after the rapture, here in chapter 5, when the throne of God is set, here in chapter 5, we have the revelation of something. And it is in this book. And the book is sealed. And the book rolls together. And until those seals are broken and open, you will not see what is there. Look at verse 2. And it says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book? That's the center of this chapter, the book. Look at verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book. The book is what's important here. Look at verse 4. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. The book. It's not just to open it, the ability to open the book, unseal the book, look into the book, read the book, and then practicalize, demonstrate what is written in the book. Look at verse 5, and one of the elders says unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book. The book is what's important in this chapter. Look at verse 6, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four bees and the midst of the the elders stood a lamb as each had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, and sent forth unto the earth. Verse 7 now, and he came and took the book, the book. He came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. Look at verse 8. And when he had taken the book. And so, as you look at the whole chapter, he's talking about the book. What's the book? It says the book was sealed. And now... The lamb, of, the lamb of God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, has prevailed and he has taken the book. What's he going to do with the book? He will break the first seal and then when he breaks the first seal, what is written in that part of the book will be demonstrated out. It will break the second seal, and what is written in that second part will be demonstrated out, dramatized. And then until the fourth, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh. Now, when the seventh seal is opened, whatever has happened as, it, as it's opening the seals, and the things are being dramatized, that's what is written in the book. Let's come now to Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Think about that. He opens the first seal, something is dramatized. And then it progresses, second seal, something dramatized. And something on uh, number three, number four. As the seventh angel sounded, then we have the proclamation that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. 
What's in the book then? What's in the book is the plan of God, is the program of God, is the title deed of the earth that will reclaim the earth, that will restore the earth, that will renovate the earth and bring the earth out of the hand of the usurper, out of the hand of Satan, out, the, out of the hand of any claimant that tries to claim ownership of the earth. This book then is the book of Acts reclamation to reclaim the earth. It's the book of the Acts restoration to restore the earth. It's the book of the Acts renovation to renovate the earth, perfect the earth and take every corruption away and take every hand, every stain that Satan the Lucifer that he has brought on the earth and then prepare it now as a gift for the almighty God because it's after the opening of all the seals that now the earth will belong to the Lord completely and let, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 consider what I say and the Lord give thee understanding in all things the Lord give you understanding tonight in Jesus name I was waiting for your amen there the message tonight the prime place of the lamb in the earth's redemption the earth's redemption the Lord wants to redeem he has redeemed us already and so as we come to chapter 5 we're not coming back to calvary we're not coming back to you know the redemption of sinners we're not coming back to the sacrificial um, you know thing that the lord jesus christ did already the, the church is raptured and the church is now in the presence of the lord and what we're talking about now is the redemption the reclamation the renovation the restoration of the whole earth that's why we're looking at the prime place the important place the indispensable place of the lamb in the earth's redemption there are three things we're looking at number one universal inability to open the book of earth's redemption the universal inability to open the book of the earth's redemption number two is the unique identity of the opener of the book of earth's reclamation the unique identity of the opener of the book of the earth's reclamation number three is the unsurpassable inspiration after obtaining the book of the earth's restoration after he after he got the book obtained the book then we have the unsurpassable inspiration they were, so, they were inspired to sing unto the Lord and to bring forth the praises of the Lord when he received the book. Let's come to number one, the universal inability to open the book of the earth's redemption. We're coming to Revelation chapter 5 and we're reading from verse, we're reading from verse uh, 1. Revelation chapter 5 verse 1, and I saw in the right hand of him, that's of God, that sat on the throne, a book reaching within and on the backside sealed with seven seals and i saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof and no man in heaven and not nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither uh, to look thereon and i wept much because no man was found worthy to open or to read the book neither to look thereon as we talk about the book this book is for the whole earth is for the whole universe and 
That book needs to be opened so that uh, there's the redemption of an individual. There's the salvation of an individual. There is the redemption of the purchased people of the church. That is the salvation of the church. But there's also the redemption of the whole earth. The salvation of man, individual, accomplished. The salvation, redemption of the church, accomplished and that church redeemed that church purchased purified has now been raptured to heaven but it still remains now the restoration of the whole earth and the the reformation and the renovation of the whole earth that's what the lord is talking about now the book of the reclamation of the restoration of the renovation of the redemption of the whole earth and it says this book was in the hand of the almighty god uh, here we're looking at the inability of anyone to open the book of the earth's redemption three things here number one the search for the worthy opener of the book the search for the worthy opener of the book number two the sorrow and the weeping of the beloved the beloved john the apostle in heaven transported to heaven and yet because there was nobody to open that book and nobody to unseal that book he wept very much number three the sealing of words obtained only in this book only in that book the knowledge we can have about the renovation about the reclamation of the earth that knowledge is only in that book and yet the words are sealed number one the search for the worthy opener of the book we're looking in at verse 2 again it's revelation chapter 5 verse 2 and i saw and his strong angel proclaiming with a, with a, I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. A great question. And that great question is searching. Searching for the one to open the book. But the book was sealed. And there was nobody able to break the seal, able to open the seal. Let's come to Isaiah chapter 29, and we're reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot for it is sealed even the people that could read you give the book to them read this and interpret for us and he says i cannot because it is sealed and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he says i am not learned so the learned cannot read it because it is sealed the unlearned the ones who cannot read they cannot read it because they cannot read and so that is the search and in heaven all the angels of god even the mighty angel and the great angel that made the announcement and said who is worthy to open the book he himself cannot open the book all the myriads of the holy angels of god in heaven their holiness did not qualify them to open the book and john the beloved himself a great apostle a beloved apostle in heaven transported there he had the announcement he too was unable to open the book and then people who still remain on the earth the philosophers and the intelligent people and the wisdom of the world and the worldly wise all of them nobody in heaven nobody on earth was able to open the book the disembodied spirits those who have died and their bodies have been buried those under the 
earth, those disembodied spirits, whether they're the uh, spirits of just men made perfect or they're the spirits of ordinary people, whoever they were, whatever wisdom they had, before they were buried in the earth, nobody in heaven, nobody on earth, nobody under the earth was able to open the book. And they were told, John said, and I wept much. That brings us to the second part there, the sorrow and the weeping of the beloved. I'm coming back to Revelation chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 3. Revelation chapter 5 verse 3, and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much because no man was worthy to open or to re and to reach the book neither to look thereon I wept much because there was nobody to open the book why the weeping we're coming to romans chapter 8 in romans chapter 8 we're reading from verse 20. romans chapter 8 verse 20 for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope all the creatures of the world were subject to the limitations on earth because of the curse that came on the earth and now in this book in the lord's hand in the father's hand in the hand of the almighty was the plan of god to reverse the course and then to renovate the earth and to take every negative sin all that the sin of satan and the sin of adam and the sin of eve and the sin of all the people of all generations all that they are seeing of course the lord is wanting to reverse everything now and the plan of that reversal and the restoration of the earth is in this book and it says the whole creature had been made subject unto vanity if this book is unsealed if this book is opened all the all the degradation all the oppression all the suffering all the curse everything that had been from the time adam and eve were cast out of the garden of eden until the age of the great revelation and a new life will begin and a new earth will be given unto us an earth that is full of righteousness and full of the love of God everything will be revealed and so the whole creature has been made subject look at verse 21 because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption that's what's in that book the plan of God for the deliverance of the whole earth from that bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God in verse 22 for we know that the whole creation groaneth the whole creation is mourning because of the heavy load and every weight upon the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also even we believers were saved were sanctified were spirit were spirit filled and we have the promises of god but you know as things are happening in the world it affects us too if pandemic is happening in the world it affects the church if a uh, disease is breaking out in the world it affects the world if the vegetation is cursed and the vegetation is not bringing forth very well it affects believers too if the climate if there's a climate change and the heat is so much and the heat waves are destroying lives it affects the believers too everything happening to the uh, to the economy of the world and to the vegetation in the world and to the conditions of the world it affects everybody that's why here the spirit of god is saying through paul the apostle and not only they who are in the world but ourselves also 
which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to which the redemption of our body. And because of we've been waiting and waiting, and now the time has come that the whole earth will be renewed and renovated. And who is the person that will open the book and read the, the things therein? And as he reads the thing therein, all those things will be dramatized, and the, the earth will come to the original stage that God had planned. And there was nobody either in heaven or in earth and already everybody was groaning and the groaning took hold of John the beloved and he said I wept much hold on now let me uh, digress a little there is the book for the whole earth there is the book for Christ when he came in Hebrews chapter 10 reading there in verse 7 Hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 7 it talks about a book and it tells us in this verse 7 then said I lo I come in the volume of the book is reaching of me to do thy will O God you see for the earth God had a book for Christ himself, apart from the earth, God had a book. And Christ was able to look into that book. And he said, in the volume of the books, it is written of me. And then I come to do thy will, O God. When all the people around him did not understand the things that were written about him, he understood. And he said, everything that is written concerning me will be fulfilled. But you know that for every child of God, for you in particular, forget about everybody now, think about yourself as the only one the Lord is pointing to. He has a book for you. Not just a book of records, what you're doing. Not just the book of life uh, where your name is written. A book as to, I am sending this one to the earth. I'm sending this one to my church. I'm sending this one to live at such a time as this. And he has a book that is written. And that thing that is written peculiarly for you. Who has been able to open the book of your life? Who has been able to look thereon and to read? Have you started even doing the things that are written in that book? Or are you still, are you just doing what everybody does? And yet what is written concerning you is quite different from what is written concerning another person. We're told in Psalm 139, Psalm 139. It tells us in Psalm 139, it says in verse 16, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being imperfect, and in thy book all my members were reaching, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them before you were born he knew you were going to be born he knows all things from eternity to eternity he knows every individual that will come and in his book there is a portion in his book where all your members all your activities all that he intends you will do you will accomplish everything has been written but anybody to read anybody to interpret anybody to show you this is what is there the spirit of god is available and it can make you see and make you know what is written concerning you that's the reason why john wept profusely when your life is just like that big your life is like that you don't know whether you are fulfilling anything or not 
and uh, even the passion you ought to have and the Lord is leading you this is the direction and when you do that thing that is preaching concerning you your whole spirit inside you will say yes 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 Amen. There is joy. There is liberty. And there is openness. And it's like life should continue like this. But you do that for such a short time. And then the book is closed again. You cannot tell what am I to do now. And then the regular life continues. And there's nothing exciting. And nothing that turns you on. All of a sudden, there'll be a little opening. And then you will do something that is reaching in the book concerning you and then there'll be joy, there'll be liberty, there'll be freedom you will feel that you're on top of the world if that could continue every day that the spirit of god should walk with you and you'll be doing that which is reaching concerning you then there'll be no crying then there'll be no groaning and then there'll be no mourning we're coming to job chapter 33 uh, job chapter 30 33 and i'm reading here from verse 22 job chapter 33 verse 23 it says if there be a messenger with him an interpreter one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness if there can come somebody that will open the book of your life and the book of the destiny of your life and the thing god wants to do to use you as part of the people part of the ministers that will bring renovation that will bring redemption that will bring reclamation and that will bring total release in your life and your life what will be lived like that what a joy that will be let's come back now to the book we're talking about that is the book of earth's redemption the earth's redemption and john said i wept much because there was no body to open the book why because look at chapter 5 chapter 5 we're reading from verse we're reading from verse 4 it says and i wait much because no man was found worthy to open or to reach the book neither to look therein because it was sealed because it was sealed we come to Hebrew, um, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, reading here from verse 3, it tells us how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery. Mystery is something hidden. Mystery is something sealed. Mystery is something nobody has opened and nobody can open. Mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. All your searchable riches of the kingdom of God that had been sealed, that had been, uh, that had been closed up, revealed to the apostles. And then Paul's, the apostles said those unsearchable riches were revealed unto me. If they are sealed, what can we know? Even the Bible we have in our hands, the book of God that leads us to life, that leads us to everlasting life. When the book is closed, uh, many people open it like the Jews, but the, the Jews could not understand because there's a veil on their mind and a veil on the Bible. Even as Jesus Christ came and they can read about him, they could have read about 
quoting from Genesis and Exodus and the Typicals and Numbers and Deuteronomy. They could have read about him as the captain of the host of the Lord in Joshua. They could have read about him as the coming king and the reigning king in 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. They could have read about him as the one that will be the everlasting priest and high priest. They could have read about him as the great teacher and they could have read about him as the Messiah but they read that every Sabbath day and the book was closed unto them. It was sealed and there are many people like that today they take the book and in this book in the Bible we have salvation, we have sanctification, we have the open door to heaven, we have total redemption, we have healing we have joy, we have everything we can have and we have everything it takes that will take us from earth and take us to heaven Heaven, but the book is sealed for them and many people as they try to read they read the words they see the words but it is sealed how I pray that this book that is sealed to many people the Holy Ghost will come and enlighten every one of us and the Holy Ghost will open the book and break the seal and everything that is meant for you and let me say everything that is meant for me I said every promise that is meant for me, every prophecy that is meant for me, every provision that is meant for me, that the Spirit of God will take it and just point me to it like this, and I will say, wow, this is mine. It was written concerning me, and as he opens the book to you every time like that, your life will never be the same again. And all the things that peg you down and pin you down, when you see what is written concerning you and Satan cannot alter that, evil spirits cannot alter that, you'll be moving on and moving on, you'll be making progress every area of your life, every day of your life in Jesus name. Number one then, the universal inability to open the book of Earth's redemption. Number two, is the unique identity of the opener of the book. What book? The book of Earth's reclamation. The book of Earth's reclamation. We're coming to Revelation chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 5. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5. And one of the elders says unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the of the four beasts living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God are sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book of the uh, out of the hand out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts the four living creatures cherubim and four and twenty elders representing the whole church already in heaven raptured up above they fell down before the lamb having every one of them halves and golden veils full of the full of odors which are the prayers of saints the unique identity of the opener of the book of Earth's reclamation. What's the identity? Number one, the lion. Number two, the lamb. Number three, the Lord. Number one, the lion with perfect prevailing power. The lion with perfect prevailing power. As um, John was weeping, one, the, one of the angels said, don't weep anymore because 
someone has prevailed and that one who has prevailed is the lion of the tribe of judah well john will understand that even before he saw him because in genesis chapter 49 genesis chapter 49 we're reading from verse 9 in genesis chapter 49 verse 9 it says judah is a lion's well judah is a lion's well there is a special selection and there is a special uh, observation for judah of all the tribes of israel that it will have the emblem and the symbol of the lion it will be the leading tribe and from there the king you understand the lion is the king of the forest the lion is the king of all those animals and it says the lion of the tribe of judah judah is the lion's whelp from the prey my son thou art gone up he stood down he stood down and he couched as a lion he's talking about a man here but he's describing him as a lion as an old lion who shall rouse him up and now he explains in verse 10 the scepter shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall all shall the gathering of the people be it's talking about Christ that when he comes at when I'm lifted up I will draw all men unto me is the lion of the tribe of judah it's also referred to as the root of david and let's come to revelation chapter 22 reading from verse 16 revelation chapter 22 verse 16 i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The root of David, that is his divinity. And then the offspring of David, that is his humanity. On the one hand, divine, that even David had to have him as the root because the Lord Jesus had been from all eternity that's his divinity and then the offspring of david he came out of the human lineage of david and he is the one the one appointed king the one appointed the lion of the tribe of judah that has prevailed to open the book let's come to number two there the lamb pure propitiatory peacemaker the lamb the pure propitiatory peacemaker he tells us in revelation chapter 5 verse 6 and i beheld lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb stood a lamb hold on now it's not that jesus christ was like an animal there a lamb do you remember the next day john sees jesus coming not like an animal jesus christ full man our redeemer he saw him coming he was not transformed or transfigured to a lamb and yet he said look at him coming and this is the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world and what john saw here is like it's not like you know it's like a lion like an animal but he had all the power of the king all the authority of the king and is the lion of the tribe of judah the same thing the meekness and the lowliness 
and the submission to the will of God and the sacrifice that he made and the marks of the lamb. The marks of the sacrifice was seen on him. That's why he said, I beheld him in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, you know, the animals uh, fight with their horns and that's their strength that's their power and he's talking about the strength and the power of the lord jesus christ here and seven represents perfection and completeness you remember he said all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me he has the totality the entirety of power natural power supernatural power great power heavenly power eternal power power prevailing power he has all the power and seven spirits of god sent unto into all the earth the seven spirits of god is the holy spirit he has the fullness of the spirit without measure that's the lamb and that's the one that died for us that's the one that brought our redemption remember we're talking about things after the rapture it's not that he's going to sacrifice for us now he's done that already it's not that he's uh, in the process of saving us now he's done that already we are studying what will be after the rapture this is what he has done in first peter chapter 1 reading from verse 18 first peter chapter 1 reading from verse 18 the lamb of god what he has done what he has accomplished already first peter chapter 1 verse 18 for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but for the precious blood of christ as of a lamb as of a lamb it's not a lamb in the literal as of a lamb without blemish and without spot number one is the lion with perfect prevailing power number two is the lamb the pure propitiatory peacemaker number three is the lord the preeminent predominant pricks the lord the preeminent, predominant prince. We're coming to Revelation chapter 5, a reading from verse 7. In verse 7, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts living creatures and the four and twenty elders representing all the whole rede redeemed the people in heaven fell down before the lamb uh, having every one of them halves and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of saints it talks about the Lord who makes a prayer to come before the Lord as, as uh, incense and the evening oblation or the evening sacrifice. In Psalm 141, Psalm 141, reading from verse 2. In Psalm 141, reading from verse 2, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the old testament priest will offer incense before the lord he says we don't offer incense anymore our prayers they are offered before the lord as incense now and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice we don't make sacrifices now but we lift our hearts we lift our hands up unto the lord and we offer prayers before the lord which acts and which is accepted of the lord as the incense of the old covenant we're now in the new covenant and our prayer is enough 
and Christ is the Lord and he is the preeminent predominant prince the Lord has now appointed him as the prince Acts chapter 2 in Acts chapter 2 reading from verse 36 Acts chapter 2 reading from verse 36 therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom ye crucified both Lord and Christ the lion the lamb the, the Lord he has made him now the Lord and he has made him the Christ Acts chapter 5 reading from Bastachi Acts chapter 5 reading from Bastachi it says the God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins we come to point number three and it's the surpassing unsurpassable inspiration after obtaining the book of Acts restoration the Acts restoration actually the apostles and assured us that there's going to be the restoration of all things everything as God intended originally for the earth there's going to be a renovation there's going to be a redemption there's going to be a reclamation there's going to be a restoration Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 Acts chapter 3 verses 20 and 21 and he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you when the heaven whom the heaven must receive and retain and keep there until the times of restitution of all things that word restitution there actually means the restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began there's going to be the restoration of all things for the earth and Christ Jesus will remain there until that restoration of all things will now come as Christ the lion the lamb the Lord received the book of the earth's restoration how the joy and the singing and inspired praise came from those creatures up above it says in Revelation chapter 5 reading from verse 9 and the song a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us you see the redeemed of the lord they were already there in heaven and they were rejoicing there in heaven you have redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us the redeemed people the ransomed people the saved people and the regenerated people has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth have you seen something there you have redeemed us that has taken place already they were in heaven already raptured at that time and they were praising God in heaven and they said in the future we shall reign on the earth before because as the seals are opened we're moving on and on and on 
to the reclamation of the earth and we're moving on to the marriage supper of the Lamb and we're moving on to the establishment of the millennial reign and it says you saved us that's past we're praising you now that's present in heaven and then at the end of the great tribulation we shall reign on the earth with you in the millennial reign the unsurpassable inspiration after obtaining the book of Acts restoration three things number one the worship of his purchased purified people the worship of his purchased purified people number two the worthiness of the precious perpetual priest the worthiness of the precious perpetual priest number three the wisdom of the powerful praise worthy preserver the word the wisdom of the powerful praise worthy preserver number one is the worship number one the worship from verses 8 9 and 10 we've read that already and in verse 9 it says and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou hast was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations and has made us has made us unto our God kings and priests you made us already and then we shall reign on the earth those are the purchased people they're already in heaven at the time we're reading now and they are worshiping God we're told in Titus chapter 2 Titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity while we're on earth that's what he did for us he has redeemed us now and he says to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works and he sang and he said he is worthy number two the worthiness of the precious perpetual priest revelation uh, chapter 5 uh, from verse 9 it said they sang a new song thou art worthy and then in verse 11 and i beheld and i heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing they worship we realize that all of us as we have been brought into the kingdom that is what our lives are for in revelation chapter 4 reading from verse 11 thou art worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things me included you included thou hast created all things and he has even recreated us and redeemed us and refashioned us and remodeled us and for the reason why so that uh, for thy pleasure they are and they were created we're now for the pleasure of the lord that's why we were created and now the wisdom of the powerful praise worthy preserver he tells us in revelation chapter 5 in verse 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and to receive riches and to receive wisdom and to receive strength and to receive honor and to receive glory and to receive blessing have you seen the seven things there because now he is the worthy one is the lion of the tribe of judah he is the lamb of god and he is the lord and the prince of life he is the only one that could take that book the book to reclaim the whole earth and can take the book 
the book of his own life and fulfill everything there and say in the volume of the book it is reaching of me and it's the one that can draw you nearer and say come there is a book of your life you have not read you cannot read and nobody in heaven among the angels nobody on earth among uh, anybody you know on earth and nobody that is under the earth that can open the book of your life the peculiar thing reaching concerning you i alone the lion the lamb the lord of your life i can open that book and then i can show to you that that direction that's not what is reaching concerning you that one that's not what is reaching concerning you come and see this one this is what you have to do and the spirit of god will bear witness in your heart this is where you ought to be and when you do that in your life and your life is mapped out open before the lord by the lion by the lamb by the lord you will give glory to god and seven things you are going to render unto him number one power thou art worthy to receive the power number two riches thou art worthy to receive the riches number three thou art worthy to receive the wisdom number four that worthy to receive the strength number five thou art worthy to receive the honor number six thou art worthy to receive the glory number seven that worthy to receive the blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them had i seen blessing honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the people of God today say, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and now we're going to join them because the father has highly exalted him that at the mention of the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is lord to the glory of god the father and to the salvation redemption of his own people why don't you stand up and say lord i joined the myriads of angels i joined the myriads of redeemed souls in heaven i join the myriads of all those people that are crying honor and glory and power and riches and blessing and wisdom and strength unto you open your mouth and worship the lord like never before and let the lord open the book of your life to you and live the life that will be as recorded by the lord what the lord envisaged for you what he planned for you before you came to this world so not be beating about the bush let that book be open and let the lord decipher and discern everything you ought to have everything you ought to know and your life will be profitable and your life will be praiseworthy every day of your life all through your life in jesus name